in a world that is shrinking every single day with more and more ways for one corner of the world to be connected to all others, it is essential we spread not only connectivity but also a common mentality. After all, we are all citizens of the world now. The best way to impart this is a common unified curriculum for the students across the world. And to discuss this further, we have Mr. Tanmay Ghosh and Mr. Akash Rao. Mr. Tanmay Ghosh leads Cambridge International's efforts in North and Central India and works with schools that offer the Cambridge curriculum as well as those which are interested in joining the Cambridge schools community. His mandate includes approving schools for registration in states or UTs such as Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Uttarakhand and many more. He has an MBA in marketing and is an economics graduate from Kironi Mal College, University of Delhi. His previous experiences include leading the school's program at Nike, India and planning advertising and marketing strategies for brands such as Panasonic and Toyota at Dentsu Incorporated. Education is at the core of Akash Raj's existence. With the dream to convert his passion for teaching into his profession, vocation and mission, Akash Raj started education, educating children in 2005 while he was still a student. In 2018, Akar Sir founded a social initiative named Borderless Education to empower and enrich education for child fraternity, for which he had received many accolades. Akar Sir served several schools under various titles, including principal with an IB of Cambridge International School in Chandigarh, director of academics in an experiential and progressive school in Maharashtra, the international curriculum advisor in another two schools in the Konkan region of Maharashtra. Over to you, sirs. Very good, uh, good morning to all of you. Am I audible at the back as well? Yeah. Firstly, thank you. Uh, uh, children, Tanmay is any day better than Tanya, uh, but I am Tanay. Uh, Tanay Ghosh, uh, manager, senior manager for Central India, North and Central India, and I am based in Delhi. And I have with me Akash Rao, one of the youngest principals of the Cambridge School. So when I requested Ravi to give me an early morning slot, I didn't realize that I will be following Lash, uh, Lakshara Ji and uh, Dr. Abdullah, so please wish me some uh, good luck. And, uh, I'll, uh, so as they say, be careful what you wish for, so I will take care of that next time. And uh, Sriram sir, I have a request for you. Please distract, uh, as you can see I am slightly nervous, please distract Colonel Shekhar so that he doesn't ask me any tough questions after that. <laughs> Right, so why are we here? You've heard the word Cambridge a lot. So let's understand what Cambridge is, who we are, what do we do with our schools here in India, and how Cambridge may be more relevant to your school than you might think it is. I'll start with a question. Without Googling, any idea how old the University of Cambridge is? Any guesses? See, the lights are very bright, so if, even if you answer wrong, I don't know who is answering. I don't know. So, feel free. Colonel Shekhar, you can answer this one. 300 years. 300 years? More than 800 years old. Now, how many entities, organizations, universities do we know which is not just survived but thrived for more than 800 years and created a legacy. Not many, right? It's the world's third oldest surviving university. Always ranked among the top five even today. It has the highest number of Nobel Prize winners in the world. So almost 14% of all Nobel Prize winners in history have come from a single university, that is the University of Cambridge. And it's not just any university. Some of our alumni have changed the world. Just look at the names in front of you. Sir Isaac Newton, the father of evolution, Charles Darwin, Stephen Hawking. These are some of the people who have studied at the University of Cambridge. And not just them. We also have a very strong connection to India. Our first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, studied in Cambridge. Just look at some of these names. Srinivas Ramanujan, the great mathematician, Homi Jahangir Bhabha, Harivansh Rai Bachchan, Dorabji Tata, Vikram Sarabhai, 
the Nightingale of India, Sarojini Naidu, Amartya Sen. Let's pause for a second and look at these names. These are stalwarts, known the world over, and they studied in Cambridge. Now, why am I talking about them? Why am I talking about the university when this is a K-12 conference? Because the school curriculum that we offer to our schools in India and worldwide comes to you directly from the University of Cambridge. The entity that I represent is called Cambridge Assessment International Education. You would have heard different names for it, CIE, CAIE. Uh, we call ourselves Cambridge International, that's the easiest way to refer to us. And it is a more than 150 year old, again call, it, call us an international board if you wish to, but a board that has been offering exams for more than 150 years. And today it has the largest research department of any board in the world. We prepare school students for life, helping them develop an informed curiosity and a lasting passion for learning. And today every second school around you, uh, you would have seen calls itself international school, world school, global school. But is there, is there anything truly international going on inside them? Maybe, maybe not. Why do we have international in our name? Because we are present in over 160 countries and in over 40 countries, the ministries of education partner with us directly. So, for example, in a country like the Maldives, for example, or uh, in a country like Singapore, where we have had a big hand in creating the national school curriculum for the country and the assessment system as well. In India today we have almost 600 schools, including some, uh, some of the top schools in the country. Just have a look at some of the names here. Many of you are present here today, so many of you already work with us. And not just these schools. Today states are coming forward and asking Cambridge for help with their state schools as well. So we have signed MOUs with the BMC, we have signed MOUs with the governments of Gujarat, Telangana, Punjab and, and again there are more to come. Just bear with me. So Cambridge is recognized the world over, including in India. So a big myth about Cambridge, so I won't say international curriculum per se, but Cambridge specifically, is that the curriculum is great, but does it help students who want to stay back in India and not go to foreign universities? The answer is yes. Again, I cannot speak for other international boards, but for Cambridge, half our students go to foreign universities today and the other half stay back and study in India. It is absolutely well recognized by the AIU, which has granted us equivalence, the Association of Indian Universities. And today, our students not only go to top foreign universities like Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, they also go to top Indian universities and institutions like IITs, like AIMS, Delhi University, Mumbai University and so on. Just to illustrate that, if you look on your right here on the slide, you will see that the girl who topped in the girls category in the JE advanced exam three years ago studied the Cambridge A-levels. She did not study a national or a state curriculum. So it is possible. So it's a very popular question from parents, from schools. Yes, of course, it's okay, but Competitive exams ka kya karenge? So this is your answer. Can you help me change the slides please? Yeah. yeah. So again, a very short testimonial. Uh, the Dean of Admissions at MIT, he thinks that Cambridge students are very well prepared for their rigorous curriculum and they have a lot of confidence, but also good deep subject knowledge. The operative word here is deep. A curriculum offers great depth as well as, uh, as breadth if you wish, and it also offers the ability to think critically. 
we've also changed ourselves for India a bit. India is the only country. I said that we offer our curriculum in more than 160 countries. In every country, we offer exams twice a year. Only in India do we offer exams thrice a year. Cambridge is the only international board present in India which has exams in the month of March and we started that to ensure that students can get their results in May just like CBSE or ICSE or state board students can and they can apply to Indian universities in time. And just have a look at a mark sheet for grades 10 and 12. Uh, you will realize that we offer both grades and marks, so there is no need to convert anything. So if you are applying to a foreign university, you can simply show your grades. If you are applying to an Indian university, you can simply show your marks. So there is no disadvantage for uh, Cambridge students anyway. Right. What do we offer exactly? We offer what we call the Cambridge Pathway which focuses on building critical thinking, problem solving and independent research skills. You can choose one of them, you can choose a part of them, you can choose all of them, entirely up to you and it's very flexible so you can offer it alongside a national curriculum that you're offering like CBSE or ICSE. Yeah. I'll hand over to Akash now and he'll talk more about how do uh, how do schools in different parts of the country and different kinds of schools benefit from it? Over to you. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Tanesh. Uh, a lot has been spoken since morning by Dr. Uh, Abdullah, Sir Lakshraj Singh Mewar and uh, Tanay now. And what I'm going to talk now is from the ground root level. As a teacher, as an educator, and now the principal of a school, a lot of things come into existence when we put all the policies into action. And I would, uh, I, 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 I would take your yes in it because the policy makers do draft a lot of things, but when we put those things into execution, only the ones, the stakeholders who are on ground, understand the true reality. Uh, I'm going to start with. Uh, a question to ponder over and that would be is lifelong learning happening in our schools uh, so Abdullah did mention about it in the morning and uh, he was quite persistent about the fact that we are creating students for the future the future which is still unknown and no one knows what is going to happen tomorrow is it truly possible to predict what might happen 10 years 20 years 50 years down the line so, the question that is lifelong learning truly imbibed in our school has always been on my mind. If you look at the Indian curriculum, like way back, thousands of years ago, lifelong learning was a part of our culture, our tradition. But now, I believe it's a time to make it as a revolution. Because somewhere down the line, in the last hundreds of years, things have got fizzled out. And this concept is truly close to my heart that I want to create not just the leaders but the true citizens of the future. Someone who can take the action in their hands. And that's where I'm going to share my journey as a Cambridge educator, a school leader and a learner myself. Eight years ago, I moved out of the Indian National Curriculum because I wanted to change things within me. I was feeling the stagnancy in terms of not doing anything worthwhile. I was teaching the same syllabus, the same exams, creating the same results. And I was under the impression, what is it going to give back to the society I live in? And that was the time I moved from the Indian National Curriculum to the Cambridge International Curriculum. I started as a support teacher, a teacher who would just support other lead teachers in the classrooms. But I was really mesmerized by the way it came to the national curriculum. This bring the change in my personality as an educator and the action I was oriented towards. I started working with DSB International School, a truly global school in the heart of Mumbai, in South Mumbai. And it happens to be a global school in itself, which caters to students more than 35 countries. 
and we teachers were from almost 18 countries around the world. As I say, it, it was a global village in itself. Despite the fact that students were from different parts of the world, we were looking at something that was unique, the curriculum. We trained the children to be lifelong learners. We wanted, to be this, we wanted them to be responsible thinkers. We wanted them to be the action takers. And all of this was possible because of the curriculum. The stagnancy was kept away. The redundancy was kept away. We were allowed to experiment. We were allowed to try and test because there was an acceptability. There was an engagement. There was an adaptability by all the stakeholders who were in the school. And who gave it to us? Yes, the Cambridge International Curriculum did make it possible for us to try and test our own methods, our own pedagogy, uh, the assessments we took, and what were the outcomes for our learners. Furthermore, when I moved out of the school, I was the head of department, then the coordinator, then the director of Cambridge Curriculum at DSB. And at that point, I realized I want to do something for the community I live in. And I started the project Borderless Education, which aims at reaching out to millions of other schools uh, around the world. But I'm really glad to say that I have connected with more than 10,000 students and teachers in India, trained them, did the consistency for them, tried to help them understand how could they be progressive in their outlook. This is another school I work with. It's in Amravati, pretty interior in the Vidarbha region of Maharashtra. It's truly an experiential school. Uh, they believe in the uh, Gandhi model of teaching and learning, where children uh, learn by doing things and not just by imbibing knowledge. They have adopted the Cambridge International Curriculum uh, because it directly fits in with what they want as a philosophy to continue. Furthermore, uh, this is my prison school in Chandigarh. I, I hail from Mumbai, but two years back I moved to Chandigarh and this is another school in the heart of the Tri-City. We were the pioneers to start the Cambridge International Curriculum where other Indian National Curriculum schools dominated the place. And what I see today in my children is that they are the citizens, they are the next leaders they already have a voice choice and agency. When I go to the classroom, which is as good as third grade or second grade, they have their innovative ideas already coming out. And who gave it to them? The free, accessible curriculum that we do. Furthermore, these are a the couple of other schools I work with. Some in Rajkot, Porbandar, the interior rural areas of uh, Maharashtra, way down south in Dehradun. All these schools, they all are different. They all are uh, varied in their nature and their form and their philosophy and their culture. But what imbibes them, what connects them, what glues them is the uh, curriculum that they offer. The Cambridge International Curriculum because it welcomes every school as a part of its community. The only thing I have learned from being a Cambridge International Educator and an Edu Leader is that we all are differently similar. There is a commonality we all share. And I'm really thankful to this curriculum because it helps me to do the best I can for the community. And I would just leave you all on one question. That is, the purpose of education is yet not understood by many stakeholders. What we are driven is by the product. And the process and the purpose is unclear to many of us. So thank you so much for giving me this time to share my experience with all of you. Thank you, Akash. And uh, there's been an indication that our time's up, but I'll just take two more minutes, if that's okay. Are any of you fond of cars? Yeah? Do you recognize this car, Lakshanaji? Or any of you for that matter? Exactly. It's the Ford Model T, the first mass-produced car in the world. When Henry Ford created this car, he spent everything on developing this car when the world didn't know what a car was. People asked him, Mr. Ford, how did you have this kind of belief? Why didn't you ask people what they wanted? Do you know what he said? He said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Yeah. So sometimes we are limited just by our own imagination. You 
in this room today. You are pioneers. You are change makers. So if you come and tell me that my market is not ready for Cambridge or for international education, maybe it is. Maybe you are the person who, who should start that in your city. When Nelson Mandela said education is the most powerful weapon with which you can change the world, who was he banking on? What kind of people was he counting on when he said that? People like you. Who will bring that change if not you? Very quickly, two more slides, I promise. There's a very famous Chinese proverb. It says, when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. The change is coming. It's already here. The wind is blown. It's blowing. Will you resist that change, create a wall? Or will you embrace that change and create a windmill? That's up to you. One last slide. Have any of you watched The Matrix? I am expecting a few more hands to go up this time. Yeah? So hopefully you will relate to this. Can we have a change of slides, please? Yeah? Next. You have two pills to choose from. Yeah, this may sound, this may seem a bit familiar to you. Choose the blue pill today. Go back to the wonderful work you're doing in your schools, as if nothing's changed. But I request you to just take a bit of time, think about it, choose the red pill, and let's see how Cambridge can work for your school. Yeah, give it a shot, give it a chance. One last slide. Next slide. Yeah, not a slide, but this is me. I'm senior manager for North and Central India. These are my contact details. I'm here for the next couple of hours. I unfortunately have to fly out um, after that. But there are a couple of colleagues I'd like to point out. Ankur, if you don't mind standing up. And uh, do we have Chikita here as well? Yeah, so Ankur here is uh, a colleague, so please get in touch with him if you can't catch, up, uh, catch hold of me. But if you can, please do come and have a word. I'd love to see if we can work together. Thank you.